she want that now? No. <coughs> the next item is, is an until 7.15, and that is a public hearing. So what we'll do is we'll go to the manager's report, and at 7.15, we'll break to open the uh, public hearing. Thank Mr. you. Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The manager's report for <coughs> Tuesday, November 27th. Excuse me. We have some uh, licenses to uh, consider. Request the board vote to approve the Sunday entertainment licenses for 20 calendar 2013, contingent upon payment of the license fee and confirmation of workers' compensation insurance. Pleasure of the board. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Mr. Chairman, I would just like to say that I would be abstaining from Days End Cavern, but voting on the rest of the proposed Sunday entertainment licenses. Okay. Mr. Chairman, also, I think I'm going to start abstaining on the Capricorn Corp. I do work there periodically, so I'll okay. abstain from that one. Right. We'll let the record show the two abstentions that were noted. Uh, do we have a second on the motion? Second. The moved and seconded. Um, I'm going to read the names just so everyone knows what they are. This is the um, entertainment license we're voting on now. Sunday. 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 <coughs> okay. They are. Transca Inc. DBA Oxford Tavern. Days End <coughs> Inc. DBA Days End Tavern. Oxford Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 5663. Oxco Inc. DBA Center Falls 2000. Periwinkle's Pub and Restaurant. DBA J. Anthony's Italian Grill. Singletary Rod and Gun Club. Veterans Council Inc. DBA American Legion. NEP Inc. DBA Route 56 Roadside Bar and Grill. If any, if there's no discussion regarding these establishments, I will call for the vote. Yes. 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 Let the record show five in the affirmative, including the, I mean, four in the affirmative, including the abstentions of both Mr. Uh, Lamarche and Selectman Casey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have also weekday entertainment licenses. I request the board vote to approve the weekday entertainment licenses for calendar 2013, contingent upon payment of the license fee and confirmation of workers' compensation insurance. Pleasure of the board to consider almost uh, a little over 15 individual establishments. Okay, I, I will read the names in the record first and then we'll entertain the motion. It's Capricorn Corp, DBA Whistle Stop Bar and Grill, Kransker Inc, DBA Oxford Tavern, Kans Kransker Inc, DBA Oxford Tavern, Joe's Diner, Inc, DBA Oxford Restaurant, Day Zen Tavern, DBA Day Zen Tavern, NEP Inc, DBA Route 56 Roadside Bar and Grill, Ox Oxco Inc, DBA Centerfolds, and that's for the jukebox, music, singing, dancing, and jukebox. Oxford VFW, post 5663, it should be. It's two here. Please note that that should be corrected. And that's for a jukebox and music, singing, and dancing. Periwinkle's Pub and Restaurant, J. Anthony's Italian Grill, music, singing, dancing. Pine Ridge Country Club. LLC DBA Pine Ridge Country Club, that's music, singing, dancing. Singletary Rod and Gun Club, Inc., jukebox, and music, singing, and dancing. Veterans Council, Inc., American Legion, jukebox, music, singing, dancing. And MKT Investments, Inc., DBA Happy <coughs> Garden Restaurant, and that's for a DJ, karaoke, karaoke and band. Pleasure of the board. So moved. Second. The moved and seconded. Discussion? I will abstain, like I said, about from Capricorn, but I'll vote for the rest of them. Okay. Mm. Same uh, abstention on my end, Days and Tavern. 
Okay, let the record show um, as the motion is voted on the two requests for abstentions. Call for the mm -hmm. vote. Yes. 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 Just for the record, um, Mr. Chairman, point of order, with the two abstentions with respect to the day's end in the Capricorn uh, to the clerk, that would be two to two? If we're abstaining, oh, excuse me, two, two zero, okay, with, with uh, two abstentions and one absent, would that be sufficient for uh, the passage? Because if not, I will vote yes for the rule and invoke the rule of necessity. I just want to make sure that the minutes are accurate. It wouldn't be two to two, it would be two. You didn't abstain on the same thing, did you? Right. You Correct. Okay, thank you. I, That's so what I'm, it's, okay. It's three, three, zero, to one. three, okay, great. I just want to make right. sure of that. Okay. We have also automatic um, amusement licenses. Request the board vote to approve the automatic amusement licenses for calendar 2013, contingent upon payment of the license fees and confirmation of workers' compensation insurance. Pleasure of the board. Okay, I'll read the, the establishments. It's Kransker, <coughs> Inc., DBA Oxford Tavern, and that's for pool tables. Uh, Days End Tavern, D Days End Tavern, pool tables, video games. Uh, NEP, Inc., Route 56 Roadside, and that's video games. Uh, Oxford, Inc., DBA Centerfolds, pool table. That's three pool tables. Oxford VFW post 5663, pool table, video games, Singletary Rod and Gun, uh, bowling, pool table, video game, Veterans Council, American Legion, pool table, video game, video game, video game, and video game. P&D, Oxford House of Pizza, video game, video game, pinball, and <coughs> pinball again. Pleasure of the board. So moved. Second. Moving seconded. Any discussion? Same abstention. Okay. And I'll call for the vote. Yes. 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 Motion carries. I'll rest there for a moment, Mr. Chairman, while okay. since the time is 7.15. It is 7.15, and we will call the public hearing to order. I will read into the record public hearing notice Lowen in is Sufi Inc DBA hometown wine and liquors of 2 Fallon Avenue in Oxford Massachusetts Jeffrey L Lowen manager has applied to the Board of Selectmen for a change of location concerning their all alcohol package store liquor license the new location will be 240 Main Street Oxford a public hearing will be held before the Oxford Board of Selectmen regarding this matter on Tuesday, November 27, 2012 at 7.15 in the Selectmen's Meeting Room, 2nd Floor, Oxford Town Hall. Written and oral comments from the public will be <coughs> accepted before and during this <coughs> hearing. Signed by the Oxford Board of Selectmen. You can come forward, please. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Marasha Sofu. And I'm part owner of Hometown Wine and Liquors in Oxford. <coughs> we recently had purchased a property right across the street from where we're located, 240 Main Street, and uh, trying to relocate our business. And you've already been through the planning yes. board? Yeah. It's properly zoned. You've <coughs> gone through all of that, so it's just a matter of getting the board's approval to move from one location to another. another one. Board members have any questions? Yes, Ms. Casey? Thank you. Uh, good evening. Good evening. It did, it, one of the, uh, it appears that we were waiting for green cards that certified meal. Wonderful. Sorry, I was late on that. That's okay. No, I just wanted to make sure that we had those in. And uh, just to, for the folks at home, basically you're moving about a hundred yards across the street, plus or minus. About the uh, 120 yards. 120 yards from where you're located right now, across yeah. the street. Okay. And I, I reviewed the application, Mr. Chairman. I don't have any questions about the application itself. Looks like everything's in order. Thank you. Mr. Bose. Uh, no, I'm all set. Okay. All set. I'm all set. 
Uh, just a couple of quick questions. <laughs> when are you going to start the construction and when do you feel that you would be operational? Well, at this time I'll speculate. Um, we don't have the building permit yet. Working on it, hopefully beginning of this week or early next week. Um, it's up to the weather and my builder, but we are looking to start right away. And uh, building will probably take about six months. So hopefully by May, June, midsummer, we would like to be in the new building. Okay. I have one final question. I was contacted by uh, a resident from Park Street, which yep. abuts the rear part of the parcel which you are going to be building on. And the neighbors there had concerns regarding uh, noise and people crossing over the tracks to an, into their neighborhood or parking close to the fence. Is there any issue well, we, that, we're that you're aware of? We're going to put the fence. Uh, we already have agreed on. Okay. A six foot high fence. Um, other than that, I'm can't really control people no. from jumping over and. But I mean, the, things, the neighbors w were they, okay with the fence. Yeah. Very they, good. We all have agreed on that, and you know, I'll be doing my best to keep up with the property and listen to the neighbors, and if they have any issues, or. And most of your parking will it be? To the rear of the building, the side of the building, parking. The building or will the be front. Um, on north side of. Uh, I'm sorry, south side of the property. Okay. Long side, and parking will be in the north side of the property. Very good. Okay, that's all I had. Good luck. Thank you very much. Okay, I'll uh, ask the board. If they have no further questions. Before I do that, I'll ask: Is there anyone in the audience that has any questions, or concerns? This is a public hearing. Okay, if not, Mr. I'll obtain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd move that uh, the board approve the change of location of hometown wine and liquors, all alcohol package store liquor license from 2 Fairlawn Avenue to 240 Main Street, Oxford, Mass. So, second. Okay, we have a motion that's been seconded. Any discussion? There being an alcohol for the vote. Yes. 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 Let the record show. Four in the affirmative, one absent. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. And it's so that it's good. Okay. Nobody here wanted it. Uh, Rainy was here too. Any other? Uh, oh, I have more items. Okay, Janet, you're gonna have to second this <coughs> one here, number four. Okay. Okay, we're back on the manager's report. Mr. Manager, what item are you on now? Um, moving to item number four, class one, two, and three compliance checks. This is for automobile sales. The board has received an inspection report on class one, two, and three licenses from Chief Michael Hassett. Compliance checks were made of all auto dealers in town and all but one passed the checks. The auto ranch of 114 Main Street failed their class two inspection <coughs> by having more vehicles on the property than allowed by the license. The allowance for their license is 30 vehicles on site there were only, uh, I'm sorry, is 30 vehicles, there were 33 vehicles on the site. In accordance with the board's policy, number 302A, the board would send a letter to the license holder, giving them 14 working days to bring their license black and back into compliance. Failure to comply would then result in a just cause hearing. Pleasure of the board? I want to obtain a motion to uh, pursue our a policy and have a letter sent. So moved. Second. So moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes. Um, just a, just as a point, this is, I believe, this person's second um, time in the past year, almost. I, is that? It seems like the last time. I don't know. I'm sure how often they do a compliance check, but uh, I. I know this has come up before, and I know he's very good at removing the vehicles, but, um, you know, it's, 
is this <coughs> this all we could do? I mean, is this is this all we want to do? You know, that's the only. I mean, it, if it's going to become, I mean, I know the man very well, and um, like I said, he, he's good at removing the vehicles. I just would hate to see it become habit forming where, and he just happens to be getting caught with a few more and a few more, and so I just. It's a it's a difficult uh, situation. It's it's difficult times too. Uh, you know, they mm -hmm. get these vehicles, and they're hoping when they purchase them from the auction or the them. dealership that they will sell them within a reasonable time and it doesn't always happen that way mm -hmm. I mean if the individual was you know substantially over but we're talking a couple of vehicles here right. and I think the last time this happened was well over a year ago okay mm -hmm. all right so I don't, I don't mean to cause to do. yeah you know I it just was a question that you know I I know he's, no, it, he's missed it a couple of times so I mean, well, I'm they still have to do business here. Too. Oh yes, yep. He keeps yep. his property up. I mean, to his credit, you know, yeah, it's clean does. and. I, You're right. I should want to keep my mouth shut. No, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's what it's all about. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we all could sometimes, but. Yeah. Yeah. Pleasure of the board. Okay, there was a, a motion has been moved and seconded, yep. so Correct. if there's no further discussion, I'll call for the vote. Yes. Abstain. Yes. Yes, let the record show three in the affirmative, one abstention, and one absent. Motion carries. Uh, the board is uh, we've received the board's received a request to put to put up some uh, no littering signs. A request that the board vote to put that request on hold. We received it from Mr. Kravoski. Um, he would like to have no littering signs posted at various points in town, and it, because as you may recall. The board wished to look at the sign policy and um, had directed, uh, requested DPW Director Sean Dival to uh, work on that. He is currently completing an inventory of all the signs in town and working on a policy, and he will submit that to the board. So, pleasure of the board to hold Mr. Kravoski's request. So moved. Okay, we have a motion made. Do we have a second? Second. Second discussion. Yes. Um, I I did read his his request and I just have a have a little issue. I mean, no littering signs are great, um, but I look at the fact that how do you enforce this? I mean, it, it's to the point you almost have to catch them red-handed, and then once you do, half the time they go to court, they get a slap on the wrist, and off they go. Um, we have a lot of signs in this town that I'll, there are many people that don't follow those signs. Don't take a left-hand turn. You see it all the time. They're taking left-hand turns. And so even though the idea is intended to be a great idea, and I believe it's a great idea, I just think it's more signs that are cluttering up the, the area. Kind of like Arlo Guthrie song that. <laughs> <laughs> so I just needed to state that I'm I'm not in favor of more signs um, personally, but I'm in favor of putting it on hold for sure. Thank you. Uh, exactly. <coughs> I mean, it's kind of an oxymoron. No n no littering sign. I mean, these signs are letters as far as I'm concerned. We got more signs in the town of Oxford. Mm -hmm. There's ever an aluminum shortage in this country. We'll just, we'll just cut all our signs down and we'll solve that problem. Abs I, I just can't, like I, uh, Dennis said, you know, just because you put a sign up, does I mean it's going to happen? Does it make the law more enforceable? Not really. I mean, not supposed to litter regardless of the sign. Like a speed, you know, speed limit sign. There's, there's never any littering. I just, I find it unnecessary. This is like deja vu all over again. Uh, we discussed this several months ago. And we sp were saying basically the same thing we said several months ago, and we've asked the DPO <coughs> director to review the number of signs and come back with a policy that we could review and approve. And the manager had just indicated that he is pretty close to getting that together for us, so I don't think that it's unreasonable to wait for him to get that to us. It's fine. Yep. <coughs> With that, I'll call for the vote. Yes. 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 
Thank you. <clears throat> oh, see, I see. Uh, Community Innovation Grant Challenge. Back, you may recall back in January of this year, the board approved our involvement in the Community Involvement Challenge Grant. Uh, the town of Spencer has been taking the lead. Uh, so far, we've received the 13 towns that are part of this group uh, received a little over 300,000. We're in line for another 200,000. It'll fund several tasks dealing with compliance with DEP and EPA, that's state and federal environmental agencies, regarding stormwater management requirements. <coughs> we have now. We now have the application form, which is the second phase of the process. Request the board vote to allow Chairman Sad to sign the application form. And I, sh and I will point out again, I did last time, that this is uh, at no cost to the town other than some staff time. Uh, Mr. Dival has been working with them uh, on this project. Pleasure of the board? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion that we grant <coughs> that request. A second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Yes. I just just have to say it because, I mean, this is an oxymoron. I mean, we're, we're applying for grant money to help the town and local towns offset the expenses related to bureaucratic regula regulations passed by unelected officials on the e EPA and DEP for these ridiculous requirements to treat stormwater that runs off of roofs and, and whatever other harebrained regs they're coming up with. So we have to apply to get grant money so we can help offset these new costs. It's just, it's ludicrous. Fun. I'm going to vote yes, but it's insanity. It really is. I mean, it's oh, it's kind of an unfunded crazy. mandate that you got to apply Beg for grant for money. money to, you know, it's just... Beg for our own tax on, money huh. back through a grant to pay for. Then thank Sorry, them. I didn't mean to interrupt. Then thank them when we get the money. Right. right? Yeah, thank oh, you. that's we great. <laughs> and we're supposed to pat ourselves on the back, <laughs> too, but I'm not playing money. that game. <laughs> it is what it is. Money. I mean, it's just... <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Okay, uh, if there's no further discussion, call for the vote. Yes. 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 The record shows four in your favor and one absent motion. Sorry. And finally, I have two reminders. The winter parking ban will take effect. <coughs> excuse me. The winter parking ban will take effect Saturday, December 1st, 2012, through April 1st, 2013. On-street parking is prohibited between the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. The parking ban will also take effect when there is an accumulation of three or more inches of snow day or night. <coughs> this is on-street parking that's prohibited. 15-minute uh, parking is allowed for postal and package delivery. And final reminder, the annual Christmas lighting... Yeah, that's what it says. The Christmas lighting ceremony will be held at the bandstand on Sunday, December 2nd, 2012 at 6.30 p.m. The ceremonies will feature the Oxford High School Madrigals Choir and Brass, a live pageant, and the arrival of Santa Claus and his elf. Hay rides around the park will take place after the arrival of Santa Claus. Hot chocolate and cookies will be served in the tent free. The ceremony is funded through the Cecilia J. Smolensky Millet Charitable Trust. That ends my report for November 27th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manager. <coughs> okay, from there we will go to the selectman's request. Thank you, John. Well, I only have one this evening, um, so I'm going to get on my soapbox. I'll make it short. But um, as we all know, or you should know, that last week our great governor decided to say that illegal immigrants could <laughs> get uh, reduce tuition funding in our state schools and I was always brought up that illegal meant it's wrong and when you do something illegal you get a punishment you pay so it really as a citizen of this state just irks the heck out of me so I don't know where the rest of this board stands but I am going to make a motion that I think, as a board, we should write a letter to our governor and our reps simply stating that we are 
against this sort of, even though it's supposed to be federally something that, you know, with the federal government, we can still write a letter as far as I'm concerned saying that we're against illegals getting any sort of reimbursement. And I would like to make that as a motion. I guess I could second for discussion. There's a motion made and seconded. Discussion? I guess, I mean, you make a good point. Uh, we have a lot of needs uh, right here in town. Um, you know, we have, uh, you know, a lot of homeless people in this in this state. We have a lot of people who, uh, you know, uh, we have the working poor. We have people who are, uh, you know, starving. Look at the homeless shelters in Worcester and whatnot and, uh, you know, our elderly. You know, there isn't <coughs> the benefits for the elderly are getting cut every year. Across the board, there's cuts, but yet we find the money to... You know what, and, and, and I have nothing against the children of illegal immigrants, but there again, I think we're setting precedent. I, I, I think we need to take care of the people who are legally the hardworking citizens of uh, Oxford and, and Massachusetts before we start worrying about whether or not we can fund the education of uh, illegals. And that's, that's my thought on it. I agree with you, Dennis, 100%. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, I, I agree with Selectman LaMarche, his sentiments, and what I would ask that we do when we do send these letters, that we send two separate letters, one letter to the governor basically outlining our dismay with his executive, what amounts to an executive order to the trustees at the different state universities and colleges uh, because it is an abuse of his executive authority. I think he has acted beyond the bounds of his executive authority and usurped the role of the legislature in demanding or sending that request to the state colleges and universities. It is a new policy and it requires legislation. So the second letter I would ask that we send our two representatives and to Senator Moore asking them to send letters to the colleges in the universities advising them not to follow this new policy or risk the, the potential of losing funding because the legislature does have the power of the purse. Let's not forget that sixth grade civics lesson and uh, that, that they do that and demand that the colleges recognize existing law which does not require them to give favorable in-state tuition rates to illegal immigrants until the legislature acts. If the state legislature passes that law requiring trustees and, and colleges to do that, then that's the law of Massachusetts. But it should not happen by executive fiat. We've already seen that done at the White House with respect to immigration. Uh, we have to have a, a, a sober discussion about immigration in this country, but it should not happen by uh, despotism of an ele of a governor or a president, and I agree with you, Selectman Lamarche. But I'd like to see two letters sent: one to the governor and one to our reps and our senator, because I think that the letters are, should be different, and that our reps and our senators have a duty to protect the people in this state if the, if the governor isn't going to do it, and they can do that through the power of the purse. Well, I agree. You know, you're just much more eloquent. I don't know about <laughs> that. I am, um, and. It, it, it's the same point, you know, as, as Selectman Bo said, um, it does irk me that, you know, our town budget has been cut over the years. We have employees that have had to been uh, eliminated or their hours eliminated, yet we can find money for something like this. I mean, it's our tax dollars. We're, we, you know, I've been brought up, again, brought up to the fact that you, you get a job, you try to bring up your children with proper values. What values am I teaching my kid if I say you can do something illegal and get a benefit out of it? And that's to me what they're doing, you know. If you if you want to be here, then become a citizen, pay your dues, pay your taxes, and then you have every right. And I and I'm all for that. That that, you know, people that pay their taxes and pay their bills and things, that's great. But if you want to freeload I'm sorry, I, I have a big problem, but thank you, I'll, I'll shut up. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if I may, and, and it doesn't even, it has nothing to do with children. It has to do with abuse of executive power. That's what this is. 
He doesn't have the power to do it. You've got Democratic members of the Senate in this state, our very own Richard Moore, quoted in the paper saying this is an abuse of executive authority. So we're not going out on, too far on a limb here when people in his own party are saying it. Well, I'll put my two cents worth in it. Um, I, I basically agree with what is being said here. And you're right to, to that aspect of it. The governor should not have taken this upon himself. It should have gone through the legislative process. I mean, that's what democracy is all about. And that, in my opinion, was bypassed. As far as students getting the same treatment as any, any resident of Massachusetts gets, I, I, I don't see any difference here. So a lot of times, these children, they have, it's not their fault that they're here. They want to be here. They want to be part of this country. They were brought here by their parents. They grew up here. They went to school with, with our children. They're part of us. That's the way I look at it. They're human beings. They're part of us. We are a nation of immigrants. That's how we started. So there has to be some sympathy to the immigrant. And sometimes we throw that word illegal out there, and it puts the wrong tag on people who really aren't illegal. There are people that need to be treated and treated fairly. Through no fault of their own, they're here, they want to be part of the community, and my feeling is they should be given every opportunity that any resident would be given. That's my personal opinion. But as far as the motion goes, I 100% agree with it. I think that it should have gone through the legislative process. The governor was wrong. And with that, I would be more than happy to call for the vote. Yes. 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 Let the record show four in the affirmative, one, one absent. Motion carries. Thank you. That's all I have. <coughs> you sure? I'm sure. <laughs> 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 yeah, you keep saying, now I'm going to be quiet, and then you come out with another firebomb. Well, um, yeah, early we had uh, recognized Mrs. Yucatonis, and, um, you know, as Jenny mentioned, we, we should be, you know, honoring all these uh, uh, volunteers and great people that do things throughout the community. And I can't think of a, uh, a group of people who deserves praise more than the Oxford Memorial Honor Guard uh, those guys have been doing this for years. And when I say years, I mean, this is going back to the mid-70s, some of these guys, 30, 25, 20 years, uh, right down the line. Um, we see them here every year at the Veterans Day Parade, Memorial Day Parade, marching, doing the 21-gun salute, playing taps. Um, you know, it's the same guys time and time again. Uh, you know, you go to a funeral of, of a veteran, they're there. They're at the wake, they're saying prayers, they're guarding the casket. Um, they're at the funerals doing the same thing, 21 gun salute, playing taps, comforting the families of these veterans. So, um, you know, I just like to recognize everyone. There's a long list, I'm not going to read their names. They know who they are. Um, but they're facing a tough time right now. As I mentioned, many of them have been there for years, and they're getting up there in the age, and they, you know, uh, you know, walking this uh, you know, Memorial Day route, uh, that's that's a long walk for a lot of these guys. It's a long walk for me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, can, I can't imagine doing it when I'm 80 years old, but... So they need help. If there's any veterans out there who wish to uh, serve on the Memorial Honor Guard, they're uh, ready and willing to take you on. Um, they have, uh, you know, they, they furnish a uniform... Uh, a jacket. Uh, they supply you with the training you need. Uh, they're welcoming all comes men, women. Uh, as long as you're a veteran, uh, they're looking for you. Um, I have one number of a gentleman I spoke to with today, Mr. Terry Cummins, and he said he'd be glad to take any phone calls um, if anyone is interested. And his number is 508-987-0161. And if you're looking for any more information, come into the Slackman's office, I'm sure. Mrs. Crandall would help you in any way. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Just, I had one item. It's the BP gas station down in South Oxford next to the car wash. Uh, we used to, many of us who've been around for a long time, just call it Reggie's. Reggie's. And uh, 
He is uh, no longer in business. I know that we received a handwritten note from him, from him uh, to the to our clerk saying basically he's turning in his license. It looks like it's abandoned, but I would say that I've seen periodic cars there for sale with uh, fluorescent numbers on the windshield for for you know for the price of the car. I just want to bring that to the board's attention, to our clerk's attention, maybe to the police department, that there shouldn't be any cars there with stickers on it for sale if he is turned his uh, his license in and he's not in business. Turned it in? He turned in a note, it's, didn't it'll he? It'll expire at the end of the year? It's by January 1st, just like all the class one, two, and three. Okay, but he's not there anymore. And I, I doubt, very much doubt he has any insurance there or anything that, okay. you know. I just want to be aware of it because I remember when Slickman Sad brought up the issue of, uh, well, how can I forget his name? Who's the fella in North Oxford? Oh, Conrad Fallon? No. Um, TNT? Mitsubishi. He, he's bouncing around selling oh. cars at different licenses. And oh. oh uh, Rivendale. R Rivenider. R Rivenider, yeah. How can we forget that? Right <laughs> now. Obviously not on that scale, but, I mean, if he's putting cars on the lot and nobody's yeah. there and nobody's accountable, I just don't want to see anybody get burned, so I just want to bring that to the police department. Do you know who owns it? The land? It's, yeah. it's owned by the, the gas company. BP. Yeah. Getty Realty. Getty Realty, huh? So maybe we should just... We had... Uh, they failed to pay the the um, inspection fee for the weights and measures. So we, we've we pulled the, the sticker and wired... And they're, they're not pumping gas no, either. No, I don't no. know if there's gas in the ground, but um, there probably is. But uh, he's not selling gas anymore either. <coughs> I just want to keep an eye on it. Okay, to the clerk and, and to the town manager. Because we did issue that license to sell those vehicles. I don't want to see anybody get, uh, any consumer get burned by it. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I just have uh, one item. I had the opportunity to go to a meeting uh, at Access Oxford uh, a week ago. The manager had... Um, set up a meeting with a consultant and with Access Oxford and Justin? Justin, yes. Justin from uh, MIS was there. And um, I went and sat in on the meeting and I walked out of there totally confused because I didn't know what was really happening and why we were talking about separate systems for the town hall, the school department, and Access Oxford. I thought that this was all supposed to be combined together. And this piece of equipment that they were showing, Joe, was something that was exclusive to the town hall. And it was very high tech, and uh, you did send me some information mm -hmm. on it. And I, I don't know who's paying the. Uh, MIS hired the technic. Uh, MIS the hired the consultant. Yeah. I don't know what they get an the hour, but it's got to be expensive. Oh, it's not cheap, no. And then when I looked at the the cost of it, we, total cost of seventy six thousand eight hundred dollars. And that just takes care of this, the town hall. Right. W who pays for that? Where's that money coming from? Well, we do have charters license up for renewal, and in the in there is a request for um, money for equipment, as well as maintenance of our iNet and um, uh, these the, the things that came up during the ascertainment hearing. Okay, so that's, none of this is coming from the taxpayers, the towns. Oh, no. No. We, we, no, not from the taxpayers. We want to use, we want to use the money that comes from the ratepayers through the, um, Okay, so. That the, would be the best way to do it. This $76,000 is coming from the amount of money that we turn over to Access to Oxford to run this. Could come from the there. Could, we could wait and get the money from Charter. That's, that's up to how the board wants to do it. But the, the piece of equipment you saw was the, the piece that, that stores or, or converts the data from the camera 
to the different formats that are needed to send it out on cable, on internet, cell phones if we do that, to, and to save it for uh, 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 copies as a DVD. That, that was the purpose of that. Yeah, Rather than one signal, it, it stores it in different... Because if we do this as we envision it with... I mentioned the um, camera that could see a uh, plan on the table here, a um, uh, large for, um, HD television screen, so you could see what's there, folks in the room can see what's there. We could broadcast that. They're all different signals for the for the presentation to get a um, PowerPoint presentation up on a screen and then convert it so that yeah it's it's it's, it's expensive I, I mean oh it's not cheap just that screen alone the 90 inch screen it's twenty three thousand one hundred dollars plus plus the labor of ten thousand seven hundred dollars for a total of thirty three thousand eight hundred dollars no I don't think so oh well, what does this say I don't know I think better go to Best Buy <laughs> how, how much Actually, does it cost to put a TV up? A paid spot. <laughs> <laughs> no, does it? No, I'm, I'm going to let me look into that oh. some more. Well, I, you know, I've been trying to do my best to try to understand what's going on between Access Oxford and the town, the town government, and I'm having a very difficult time understanding what the heck is going on. I mean, we've had Access Oxford in here back in June. Now it's six months later, and we are no further forward than we were six months ago. And the whole thing back then was the lack of communication, and we thought that the communication was going to get better. There, ha there have been meetings that, that have been scheduled, scheduled, postponed. Whether it was legitimate or not is neither here nor there. But there was some meetings. I know Selectman Vos went to. I know Selectman Lamarche went to. Um, I wasn't able to go to one of them, and, and I was ha happy to, to know that there was representation from the board at these meetings. And my understanding was that we were going to try to open the lines of communication and work together, and that was six months ago. And as far as I'm concerned, we haven't gotten any further than we did six months ago. We had Axfit, Access Oxford in here last month. And I can recall the board saying, let's go along with the request from Access Oxford to have the line dropped from the school department down to Access Oxford's uh, studio so that the broadcasting can be the, everything could be done from that location as opposed from the school department. Well, I made a point to, to go over there and to see what was, what was done and that hasn't been done. What has been done is we from the town hall have brought equipment over there to the school department so that they could monitor and update their, um, their access to their equipment. That's all that has been done. Mm. And the equipment that I saw was a Panasonic copy machine that wasn't new. So I'm assuming, Joe, that it was something that was brought from here and given to the school department, was it? We set it up so they could rebroadcast. The, the problem I solved was the problem that was uh, um, articulated at the last meeting, which is that the rebroadcast of the school committee meetings was on channel 11 and not on channel 13. It was a simple fix to, to put that equipment there yeah, it's old equipment, but they, they record on, on tape. So to, it's a tape player and a timer, a switch, so that um, the superintendent's exec, um, administrative assistant who does the message board can do their message board, and then just as we do here, at certain times during the day, the meeting will be rebroadcast on Channel 13. That, that I thought, solved the problem. I thought the problem was that in order to correct that, the problem was going to be solved by dropping the wire down into the studio so that Access Oxford could do that. Why would we want to have school department personnel doing it when we have Access Oxford that is supposed to be doing these things? Yeah. 
Well, it's the it's the educational channel. It's the school department messages. It's not uh, what over the over the last ten years. It's been that Access Oxford does the public channel. We in the town hall and here at the meetings have been doing the government broadcast and the school department. They were doing it out of uh, Sigony Street before they moved out of there. See, but they were I, doing all that. I thought that when we this was set up, and, and I know that we get that one lump sum check, and that goes to Access Oxford, and that is to take care of the town's, the town's two channels, the school and the town hall, and Access Oxford. So, I mean, they're getting the check for all that right now, so why shouldn't they be doing the work? Well, the question is why are they getting the whole check as well? That's a, another way to look at the situation is why do they get all the money? Because they're not doing all of it. Okay. And so there's two ways to look at right. it. If and that's up to the board. The yes. board has that power. You could say right now, because the checks go out January 1st and July 1st. We could say now before January 1st, from now on the money will come to the town. And the town will parcel the money out to the school department and to Access Oxford. The school department will take care of the educational channel. The town will take care of the government channel. And Access Oxford will take care of the public channel. That's an alternative. I understand that. Or we could, you could say, we don't want to be in charge of the government message. Now, that's going to become awkward if I have to get a message up during an emergency or if the school department has to, wants to get a message up that they're ca canceling school or something's going on in theirs because now they have to go through a third party to get it done. When we were we were in the EOC during the um, that storm, I don't know if they call it a tropical storm. It wasn't a, quite a hurricane, Sandy. We all we had to do was call Justin. He could remotely put up messages on Channel 12, stop all of the other stuff, put up the messages. And then when the storm was over, go back to normal. Okay. But that can't be done by Access Oxford? I don't know. I thought the original intent was to have them do it. But in, in all due respect, Joe, you've been taking the heat on this for a number of years, and it has showed up in your evaluation. I, I think every member of the board had some concern about not liking the way things were going as far as telecommunications mm -hmm. were concerned in the town. We all had those complaints. And it was reflected in your evaluation over the years. So, in all due respect, you're trying to get this thing squared away. Mm -hmm. and, and I can respect you for that. But in my opinion, it's not going anywhere. And I haven't seen that communication opened up between the town hall and Access Oxford. I haven't seen it. You know, when I talk to people from Access Oxford, I get one story, as I'm sure other members of the board are getting the same story. And we talk to you, we get another story. So, obviously, the two sides are still not sp speaking and working together. And that's the frustration that I have, and I don't know if my, my colleagues on the board have the same frustration. It's, it's not personal against you or Access Oxford. It's just that right now something's broke and we've got to fix it. You know, I, I see this as m less complex than I think you see it. My personal opinion, and it's only my personal opinion, is that we <coughs> control the purse strings here. If it was me, and I could say to Access Oxford, listen, we're not getting the service. These are the problems we're having. This is what we need to be corrective. Do it. I'll give you six months to do it. And if we don't see any progress, it's over. We take it away. We have the power of holding the purse strings. You have said it. Our attorneys have said it. We can do it. So in my opinion, I would say <clears throat> let Oxford Access run with it. Give them a period of time to do it, set up a system, do it, and, and do it to our, our, our satisfaction. And if we're not satisfied within six months, then we do something different. We take it over. We take over the, the public access part, the education part, whichever, whatever we want to do. But something has to be done to correct the problem. The frustration is just continually growing. And, you know, I'm going to open this up to the board because I don't know if you guys have the same feelings that I do. Thank you so much.
I, I agree with you, John. And Selectman Vos and I did attend the meeting about a month ago, and when I left that meeting, I thought everything was pretty much solved, that all access Oxford had to do was show a floor plan of where they were going to put the equipment, where the cameras were going to go, uh, what they were going to do, and once that happened, boom, they were going to be able to, to, to do their thing. And as, as far as I'm concerned, they got all the equipment. That's what they've told us. I've been over there many, many times. I see all this equipment. It looks great to me. So, and I, and I agree. I, I think they should have control right now, okay? Give them a, you know, boom, get it done, get it fixed. You, you control all the channels and, and get that silly, I'm the one that brought that up, that it, it bugs me that I'm watching a nice show on the Access channel and all of a sudden the school committee bops on. Uh, they got their own channel, so straighten that out, get them on their channel, government's on their channel, Access has their own channel, let Access run everything. They got their employees, they know how to run the equipment, and and I agree with you. If we have a problem, fix it. If you can't fix it, we'll get rid of you. And and I agree with that 100%, and I have all the confidence that they'll do a great job. And, and I think we should just give them it. Just go with it. You know, they've been doing it for years, you know, and... Uh, they've been doing it for years. They haven't well, been doing it for years. In fact, two years in a row, I was told by, uh, by one selectman, talk to Tony. I talked to Tony. Nothing happened. Talk to Tony. Nothing happened. I'm here. You're frustrated with the, the lack of communication. I'm here most days of the week. Okay? You all have to be sought out. But you have more communication with Access Oxford than I do. Why is that? Because I failed somehow? Yes, Mr. Bose? Are you? Yeah, I'm all set. Um, I don't know what happened. I went to a meeting three weeks ago, a month ago, and I left there feeling great about it. I, you know, we were very specific as to what our next step was. It was uh, November, or what was it? We wanted to see the plan by November 25th, and that was our next step. We didn't go too far because it's been such a slow-moving process that we didn't want to put 15 things out there. We wanted baby steps. But in that meeting, I seen great strides. I seen Access, Access Oxford pretty much agreeing to whatever the Board of Selectmen was looking for. I mean, I can't say the whole board, but me and Dennis were there in Mr. Zaneski. And when I left there, uh, Joe seemed very pleased. Um, there seemed to be a sediment that we were going to go in the direction of letting Oxford Access take over the whole kit and caboodle, as they should be. Joe had mentioned they've been, they're being paid for it. Well, you know what? If I'm paying for something for everything, I want everything. That's just the way it is. As John said, after six months, it ain't being done. You know what? I'm to the point where after six months, I ain't going to have a problem with pulling it away from you, Tony. I'm not going to because you know what? I think that you're going to be given every opportunity to make this thing right. That's not to say that, you know, it, it, it's going to be just cause, obviously, but um, you know what? I think when we left that meeting, we all were on the, on the you know, I think we're, I agree. were, were we not? That's I mean, I right. thought it was great. I, I, thought, thought, I thought we had I, made I, progress. I, I, I thought I, we I made progress. With, right, exactly, Joe. And I thought they had the equipment and everything, and it was I, just, I, I, just I, show I, us a plan, and off you go. That's I didn't know I didn't thought. know if they had the equipment or not. What I, what I wanted to see was <clears> this, <throat> and I was very clear. I said, I want to see the layout. I want to see the specifications on the equipment. I want nothing to happen until Mr. Zaneski looks at that specification and this board looks at that specification and we make sure that that's okay. Once that's done, then we take the next step forward. I don't know what happened at this meeting. It was like, you know, everything was great. And then I hear Mr. Sad talking today and it's, it, it, you know, he went to a different meeting. Then, you know, he went to the next meeting and something didn't go so smoothly. I, I really don't know. As far as the price of the equipment goes, <laughs> that does seem high to me. I mean, I don't know nothing about audiovisual work, and and I'm hoping that we're not going to see. I know all the monies that that comes that goes to Oxford Access comes out of the ratepayer, essentially the taxpayers of Oxford. So I'm not. I'm hoping it's not going to be a an increase in what percentage they pay to pay for this equipment. And I'm seeing Tony's. He's saying no. So I think that's a great thing. But um, 
I didn't feel any frustration with Oxford Access after the last meeting until tonight, and I'm hoping that we can get back on course where we were, get the, get the plan, get, get it to us, get the specification of the equipment. If there's any problems with the specification of the equipment, uh, Joe's going to let you know, and I, and I thought that's where we were at. I and did that. <coughs> Justin oh. has Justin has forwarded to Access Oxford. Okay, so what was the, so what uh, is the problem with the specification? The only the what we talked about in in the in in the concept was was to allow us to do like I think you pointed out other towns do, which is to stream it online, right? As well, and some town you can go and it's like watching YouTube. You click on the thing, and you can watch, you can check history on a his on the selectmen's meeting. Okay, all right. You need the equipment to do that, and this is not, this and is that's not, not what they okay. have. So we need to go back, according to our guys. So we've got to, we've got to sit down and talk about it. And like I say, I'm in the building most days of the week. Was 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 <coughs> when you say your our guy was our guy at our this, our expert our, our uh, guy at this meeting. Uh, I think the town the Mike? town obviously hired a consultant. Right? Was this yeah, Mike? Was there a guy? Mike? Was there? this was a guy from Concord, Mass, who was obviously being paid by us. Yeah to be a consultant and he had brought in um, an individual from Vantage Technology no I'm sorry Vantage Technology was a consulting firm from Concord Mass and he brought in with him the salesman who was trying to sell this C box to us that is going to do what the manager had just briefly explained mm -hmm. okay which takes us like one step further than what we're doing now of the equipment that Oxus Oxford has right now because this would give you the capability of putting it on uh, online. online okay uh, so it, it is a better technology a newer technology but it doesn't mean that getting online has to be only done by this I right. think Axford, Oxford. I, I asked that question of Tony, and that can that can be done by equipment that you <coughs> you can get. You already have that equipment, right? And and I saw all these cameras, all this equipment over there. Now, Tony, what happens uh, with this equipment if we don't use it? What do you do with it? Can you give it back to the companies that you purchased it from? After listening to your three talk, and it seemed like you want the equipment put in here. All agree that you want the equipment put in here. What what we what we what we said, Tony, <laughs> at the meeting. And we can take we have to have minutes at your meeting because it, it seems like everything's getting changed now. What I had said, Tony, was this. I says I didn't want any equipment put in or bought until we had the proper specification. And, you know, I don't know whether or not the equipment you have is the proper specification or not. And you might have bought this equipment eight months ago. But if it's not what the town wants or needs or what Joe thinks is appropriate, then that's not what we're going to go with. I mean, there's going to be some give and take here. You're going to have to give and take, and we're going to have to give and take. And we're going to get this thing done. But if if you have equipment, well, it, maybe it's not the equipment we need. The equipment we need is... is the, in other towns, if the town manager had seen in Dudley... Tony, uh, Tony, but the, 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 the thing was this. We had talked about a specification that needed to be met. Just because you've had the equipment in your closet for eight months doesn't mean that's the equipment we need. It wasn't in there for eight months, sir. All right. What, the equipment was bought and it was laid out was according to specifications that I had. That was not the. It towns. wasn't. It wasn't according to the specification that that Joe was asking for. He had asked about equipment in Dudley that he liked in Dudley when they went to a meeting there. I go to Dudley and I see exactly what they have, and I've been into other towns to see what kind of equipment they have. And this is the newest stuff that's on the market. And it may, and it may, it may very well be what we need, but we don't know that yet. You don't know yet. When do we do know what is the right stuff? We don't know, it, Mike. Well, we're gonna, I don't know. Joe, is it is this it is, is it the right stuff? Is it the right stuff? I'll talk to Justin. I I've, I've had. Justin. That's what we need to go. Didn't he send you? This was the thing. We. <laughs> I don't know why it's getting so difficult. We wanted a layout. We wanted a, spec a specification. 
Do we have Joe, that? do you have it? We do. Look it. Yeah. Yeah. Look at you, it. Is it Karen is it sent all? it to you. Right, we all got it. You all got it from them. I understand that, but what I'm saying <clears> is, it, is it what you want? I have, I'll have. i send you the, the guy's comment. Justin has the comments from right. our, well, our that's guy. That's what we got to find out. We know why Justin is doing the work that I should be doing as far as seeing what needs to be done up here. That's another thing that puzzles me the most as far as what's happening in this uh, last few months here. Why He's my IT guy. He's, He's an IT guy that works for the town. That's I'm right. The guy that works for the the town also that takes care of the public television and all the government stations. Why don't I know what's going on? You work for Access Oxford. Right. You don't work for the town. No, I don't. Right. In fact, the town doesn't <coughs> even touch the money that you get. You get it directly from Charter now. That is true. You're we totally independent from the town. And that's one of the problems about allowing an outside okay. organization to take over town and school functions. Okay. Let's They're not part of the town. Let's do it one at a time here. Selectman Casey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just want to, to comment here. I know we've all received a lot of information over this over the last several months. Um, back in 1997, uh, I, I'm going to use the pronoun, pronoun I with the support of the board. We voted to put cameras on for the, board, for the selectmen's meetings back in 1997 long overdue, long time ago. And since that time, with the exception of maybe one or two town manager's evaluations, I have always asked the town manager to work on improving the broadcast of government meetings in this room. So while frustration is clear, and I echo that of my colleagues for the last 10 months, this is frustration that has been building for 10 years because the quality of the meetings in this room have been a problem for years. Okay, so I want to just put that background on the table. And Selectman Zad, Chairman Zad, you know that that's, you've heard complaints. I'm sure we all have, whether it's the volume, you can't see people, why isn't the channel as clear as the school committee meetings, and so on and so on and so on. So this is not a 10-month problem. And I am very frustrated by this. Um, you know, I'm just sitting here listening and, and shaking my head saying that this is a problem that should have been solved years ago, and it hasn't been solved. And I'm at the point now where it doesn't even matter who's, who's right and who's wrong because the people in this town are paying for a quality broadcast through their monthly cable bills. So the taxpayers are paying and they're not getting a good product for this service and they haven't been for a very long time. So what I would be prepared to do, Mr. Chairman, and you mentioned it, in 90 days, I will be prepared to take a vote to consolidate the funding that we receive in one entity if this problem is not resolved 100%. Because this hasn't been a 10-month problem. It's been a 10-year problem. And I will be prepared to make that vote in 90 days. And whether the money goes to Access Oxford or goes to the town manager, it needs to go somewhere. Because obviously, whether it's a personality turf battle, miscommunication, whatever the issue is, I don't even care anymore. It's not up to me to solve personnel problems and personality problems. It's up to us to make sure the people in this community have a quality broadcast. So in 90 days, somebody's going to get all the money. I'll make a motion. Whether I have the support of my colleagues will yet to be seen, but enough is enough. You know, I think you, your point is well taken. I mean, th I think we all feel the same way you do. I mean, we've been facing this for years. Yes. There's no, no doubt about it. But I, I think the problem, whether, whether it's six months or 90 days, the problem is still going to exist until we give either Access Oxford the opportunity to run with it by themselves or take it away from Access Oxford and give it to the town to do by themselves, one way or the other. But I feel that w we should at least give Access Oxford the opportunity, since they have the equipment, put it in. Let's see if it satisfies us. And if it doesn't satisfy us, see you later, Tony. It's as simple as that. I can't blame you for the equipment. If it's not satisfactory, no, no. then we get new equipment. That's we're concerned. We're that's concerned that's about the service. We're concerned about the service and the quality, the quality of service that we're getting. And if we don't get it, like Selectman Casey says, we'll just take the whole thing over. I mean, we can't go on year after year after year. I hear. I hear. I we just can't. 
I can't determine the time that Charter is going to relocate cables down to our location. When that's there, we can only do what we can work with Charter. And I know that a, some of this problem is Charter's problem, too, as far as clarity Correct. is they concerned. The issue. Right. I, I talked to you about that today, and I went up and I looked at the school monitors. It's atrocious. You can't even read it. True. All right? Now, that's a, that's a cable problem. That's something that, that has to be taken care of between you and the cable company mm -hmm. to correct that. And in that meeting that I sat in a week ago with the, with the consultant, there was discussion regarding... Uh, the equipment, and I asked the question, what's the difference between analog and high def? Okay, and they said that that equipment that they have could do it in high def, but the cable channel would have to convert to high, the, uh, our access channels to high def in order for us to get it. And that, even the consultant said, it's not high on cable companies' priority, it's local channels. They're not going to invest the money in high definition for local access channels. So we could be analog for years to come. But you can, you can go by that and still get the technology that we need as far as the Internet and all of that. Am I correct? Or, uh, am I, I could bring a piece of equipment over here tonight, and we could be streaming out of here if need be, but we don't have the okay to do anything yet. Uh, see, I can take the, the, the problem is, do we want to give access to Oxford the opportunity to correct the wrong that's been done over these years, at least give them an opportunity, or do we want to continue on the road we're on now and having the town manager go in one direction and access to Oxford <coughs> go in the other? I mean, at some point, the board has to make a decision on how we want to handle this. Right. No, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, Joe... <laughs> Do you feel as though that Tony is going to make you happy? I mean, is there just is there such a gap between you that no matter what he does, you're not going to be happy? I, 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 I sent, haven't I talked to Tony. I haven't talked to Tony since our Thursday night meeting, and he's been in the building here. All right, like I said, I, hear what I said. I'm here most days of the week. You all have to be sought is out. It, is you get more conversation with Access Oxford than I do. I think I'm getting my answer. I think I'm getting my answer. All right. You got your answer. I got my answer. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to throw this out to the board and, and just to get something going. I would like to... Well, we have a motion already, John, on the... Right? We do? No, I uh, wasn't. Didn't miss it. Oh. No, I just said that I would be oh. prepared to do something oh, in 90 okay. days because we, it's just you know it's just ridiculous. It's nothing is happening and it's, it's not going to get done because people can't figure it out. And even though we have an expert, uh, that was one question, Mr. Chairman. Can I ask? Does Access Oxford has have an expert consultant? I can get one. Do I have one right, right now? Right. No, I don't have one. that We pay for it right now. No, we don't. Have you I don't used want one you. In the past? Okay. Have you used the consultant in the past? I've used them, uh, other consultants, but I feel that working with uh, Sturbridge, when we put the assistant together, that I didn't need to bring in a consultant to do something that Sturbridge is satisfied with. When I put the school meeting system together up there, I didn't call the consultant in to pay extra cost to do the school committee broadcast system. So I should have to bring another one in. If I need one, I could bring one in. But do I need one right now? I don't feel there's an access off which you need one right now for an extra cost. Well, it, this, see, this is a problem that I have. This is, this is, with all due respect. Go ahead. I wouldn't walk into an operating room and try to perform brain surgery, okay? I would walk into a courtroom and try a rape case. People have core competencies, and, you know, this is a, a situation where, with all due respect to Access Oxford, you need an expert. So we've got a situation where we're supposed to be putting together a quality broadcast, and the town is paying. We're paying for an expert. Yeah. That's wrong. That's right, it's wrong. Why are we paying for an expert? But it sounds like an expert is needed. It sounds like an expert is needed here. Why, wouldn't, why wasn't an expert brought in to consult with Access Oxford? See, I've got a, now I've got an issue. Now I've got a confidence issue here with who's the right 
who's the right person or right entity to, to finish this because this isn't something, this is, I mean, you need an expert for this. I, I'm sorry. In, in a stir in what in what works in Sturbridge might not work, but just let me finish, Tony. I mean, I'm not I'm not criticizing anybody, but what works in Sturbridge um, might not work here in Oxford. <laughs> you know. When you was concerned about the audio end of it, I brought in a, Sorry. a person that was of quality to handle all of the audio equipment there. He gave me a report which I passed on to the town management that this equipment is nothing wrong with it. No, it's not. Wait, 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 wait. But this is this is. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I, this isn't about there's nothing wrong with this equipment. This is about we've had meetings. Specifications were drawn up. For some reason, I don't know why, Access Oxford doesn't have an expert. The town is paying for an expert. So why can't people get on the same page and utilize the expertise of a consultant to put the best system in this room? Why can't that happen? Why hasn't that happened? I put that question out there, Mr. Chairman. I want to know why. And don't point the fingers at each other. Somebody want to answer? Tony? Why didn't we have a You're on the board. Okay. I, I'm, this gentleman's on the board. I'm right? the president of the board. Go ahead. I've been president for about a year. My took over from my predecessor. I'm Dan Scotty. Um, we've been back and forth over a lot of these things over the last couple of years. And I have to say, 10 minutes ago, I was in my house in my jammies watching a very clear broadcast with this, what everyone seems to think is antiquated equipment. Okay? Um, Mr. Zaneski's consultant, his response to our proposal was, well, the cameras aren't high definition. That is true. The reason the cameras are not high definition is because public access does not broadcast in high definition. You will be spending a lot of thousands of dollars extra for high definition cameras to not get high definition out of the signal. If you want to take that up with charter, that's at the town's prerogative. We are trying to move forward. The specifications that the consultant laid out, we don't feel are appropriate. We do have the expertise in town. That's what Access Oxford was formed to do. Our group spends a lot of time researching and talking with people and learning and dealing with all of these things. I've said it before, I don't think the town wants to be in the business of running television studios and stations for a number of reasons. I just need to catch my breath. A lot of stairs. <laughs> Mr. Um, Chairman, if, if I, w w may I ask, you just said the spef specifications of the expert were not appropriate. Can I ask what your background is in this, in this area? Just because I just want to know what we've got. Like what, what, what are the, who are the players and, and what are people saying? Can I ask what your background is and what do you base your comment on that spe specifications of the expert are not appropriate? Well, I'm basing that comment on the fact that the broadcast that you get on public access from Charter is standard definition. It's not high definition. So to put in cameras that are high definition capable is a waste. You'll get high definition to the TV or to, to the signal box that we're trying to put in here, and it won't go anywhere. Oh, I it's understand that. Okay. Okay. And is we, is we, Charter doing that in any other communities? No. Okay. They will not do that because they do not make any money from it. They are saving their high definition bandwidth for things that they can turn a profit on. They will never, ever turn a profit on public access television. Never. Though we may try. Though we may try. <laughs> but can we, ha can we have this conversation? Uh, I had Justin uh, 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 get comments from our expert. You cited that about the camera. That's fine. This is the first response I'm hearing about that comment. Well, that's because we only got them yesterday. So then where's the problem? You got them yesterday. We haven't had a chance to talk about it. Right. Well, I'm watching this at home, and everybody's getting all excited and upset. And to, to Sluckman Voss's thing, we, we presented our plan and to we, you. And we gave it to our expert. And you gave it to your you expert. And you got back. Now, we, so the conversation is back and forth. It's like stopped. But it, you make a we, good point. We only you got, got the it comments. yesterday. 
Well, so then, how? Then why are we here doing this on television? I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, this is this I have is no a problem with doing this at a public <laughs> open meeting. Not at all. I don't have the a problem with it either. Watch this. Should be able to see That's what's right. going on here. Absolutely. I don't have. I don't have an issue. If That's you why have I came frustrations. Show it. Because if I have frustrations, I'm going to show it. You better believe it. I, I do. And we would love to take responsibility for all three channels. We have the capability. We have the equipment. We have the knowledge. And we have the... Personally, I'm willing to let Access Oxford do it. I said it just a, a half so hour ago, okay? Then, then make a motion I, and saying, make it happen. I'm saying give you a chance. If you don't come across, it's over. Make a motion and make it happen. I'll make a motion. Okay. No, I, I'm okay. You, I'm, I'm right, sorry. ready right now. I'm sick of. The, I mean, we're going back and forth, back and forth. Nothing's getting to come. I'm going to make a motion that we give Access Oxford the authority to run all three channels for the next six months and at the end of those six months if we're not f fully satisfied and if they haven't met our concerns we pull the plug right. Mr. Bose? I second it it's been for comment it's been second I'm sorry I, I, I no you second it I second it for comment um, how about the other things we we're looking for? We, we wanted to stream on the internet. We, I mean, we still need to clarify what we want. That's one of they our concerns. They stuff. have to produce well, that in six months. We need to make sure this is clear in our motion. Do we, you know, they We have to be satisfied. Right. We want no complaints from our customers. Customers meaning. What are we, Disney? You know, people that want to see what's going on in government. We, and we are going to provide the best service and equipment and capabilities that we can. I'll tell you, watching this on my standard deaf TV, I could count the lines in your bifocals, selecting the Lamarche. So it, <laughs> even with standard definition, we can we can provide a very good, high quality but, product. But here but, but here again. Yep. Go ahead. There's certain things that, that we that we that need to happen. Um, you know, internet we we need that we just it's fine to say go ahead and do it, but what are we what are we what are we expecting? Because we say go ahead and do it, then we're expecting qualify that. we're I mean, expecting equipment to be in, installed here to take care of what our needs are, and I think his point is well taken. You know, we're not just satisfied with today; we want to look for the future as well. And internet should be a part of it. And we already have the equipment that's capable of doing that. Okay. We're we're researching what the costs are to that. That may mean that we don't have enough in our budget right now to do that. So we may have to, in the contract, ask for a little bit more money. We're still getting quotes on that. Streaming live is very expensive. YouTube is free. Is that the appropriate place to put the stuff? I don't know. We, we, we were talking about, and I don't want to turn this into a 9.30 meeting, but what we were talking about, not, I wasn't talking about YouTube. What I seen with Sturbridge was you go on there, town website you click on it and then you can and you have an archive we've you, you have an archive we've, that, that, that's what it is it's not YouTube or and we whatever. and we have we have talked about doing live streaming and we've also talked about having some sort of archive where off of you know we could point to it from multiple places from from the town website from the access Oxford website from the school website from you know, Mrs. Zineski, if you wanted to put up your own website and say, hey, look at the meetings I was in involved in, you could feel free to do that or you could link to it from a blog or, or whatever. Yeah. So I, we... I, I, guess, I guess to that point, without, <laughs> I guess we could throw it out that way. And I would just caution Access Oxford to do as much as you possibly can because in six months, mm -hmm. if, it, if it doesn't, if we don't like it and we don't find you guys receptive to fixing the problem in six months, you know, that'd be my, you know, the, we're going to pull The town I mean, will just take it over. We'll which, just, we'll which, is, it over. which is the risk that we take, but I know we can provide the what the town wants and needs. Okay. If, if I may, I, Mr. Scotty, I, I had asked you one question. You started to explain the specifications, uh, why they weren't appropriate, and you talked about the standard def versus the high def. Can I ask what... Um, I know you, you know, I appreciate you coming here and you're explaining it to the board and, and I, I do thank you for that. What, what is the, um, how many members are on the board right now? We have six. Six. Mm -hmm. And what is the level of expertise of the members on the board to, <coughs> to handle 
what is being requested based on the meetings that have been held? The, the board members themselves don't necessarily do the work. We have um, some paid employees. We have Tony, who's our executive director. Um, we have a, a group of volunteers. Tony is our, our main source of expertise. If we don't, if Tony doesn't know what it is, we have the contacts through going to conferences, through uh, community networking with other local access uh, stations <clears throat> to see what they do, what they what they work with. We do work with vendors that are that are very receptive to to our questions and and provide us with what we think are are good answers. So we don't necessarily have to be the be all end all expert, um, but what we have done is at least since I've taken over, everything that we have done has been looking forward. We don't want to do anything that's going to prevent us from doing something else. Right now we have a, you know, a broadcast system that we can connect it to the internet. We just need to know who to connect it to. And that's, that's where we're, we're figuring that out. Okay, so you have a, you have a group of hardworking volunteers. Yes. Okay, that's a long yep. way of saying that. All right. One of the things to Selectman LaMarche's motion, I, I, I would like to take the time that asks that we not vote tonight, but take the time for the board at our next meeting to set the specifications that we're looking for based on input from our consultant. Mm -hmm. So when we vote this and we it comes up for a six month review, we've got a benchmark to say these are the specs that we set into to to us like Mimbosa's point. This is what has been done. This is wh what has not been done. Because I'll be honest with you. God bless you, your, your, your board and all your volunteers and the hard work that they do. Uh, because a lot of this stuff is very technical. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know a lot about this stuff, but, but I don't. But I know about standard def versus high def, and I get your point on that, so I understand that. I would like to see your folks work with our consultant and, and sit down. I mean, we've paid for an expert and the people of the town have paid for it, and they're paying for this broadcast. I would like to see some collaboration with our consultant and your folks and, and come up with the solutions, and at the same time for the board to set the specs. And, and, if, it come, and if it means, you know, a six-month window to see, you know, here, here, you, here are the keys to the car. You know, hope you can get us from point A to point, uh, point Z, and if you can, great. And if you can't, then we're going to have to reevaluate. But I would like to see that expertise utilized. And I think it benefits everybody. I think personalities need to be, you know, put in check. We know up here we have no egos. So we never have a problem. Uh, but with respect to the different personalities, you know, you guys got to get on the same page because obviously you're not. And, and if you've got an expert whose resources you could tap into with a, a, a group of hardworking volunteers, I think you're crazy if you don't, especially if you want to succeed. So that's my point, Mr. Chairman. So I would ask that we hold off on the motion. I think your point is well taken, uh, Selectman Casey, but could I just, for, for clarification purposes, I, I think the board has to be clear as well as to what direction we want to go because the consultant is going to be taking orders from our town manager, okay? And we have to understand or give direction to the town manager which way we want to go. I get the sense here by the members of the board that the direction we want to go is to have Access Oxford handle all three stations. And, and that's what... That's if what that I'm being the case, then the consultant has to know that mm -hmm. and know that he's... He's working in that regard, knowing that we want a complete grouping of all the facets involved here under Access Oxford and not fragmented school, town hall, Access Oxford. It has to be one. And Mr. Chairman, now, and that was an, an assumption I was making in my comments, that it would all be one and the consultant would be working with Access Oxford to help them put that package together. And because I think they need that level of expertise. I think you have the heart. I think you just need, you know, and, and you've, you've got a lot of brain power, but I think that that would help. And I'm not telling you your business, but I think it might help. Excuse me. Can we bring in our own consultant if that need be? I don't want a battle of consultants. I thought we were supposed to be working together. So you're going to spend money for a consultant, and we're going to spend money on a consultant? I, I, Th this consultant will be working in one direction. The board has given the consensus that we want Access Oxford 
to take charge of all three channels. Okay, so basically the consultant is working for you, Tony, and working for us. If I may. With the consultant, did you feel comfortable when he was, his presentation was to try to push this $76,000 contract to that direction? In? No, I, I felt uncomfortable because I, I saw it as more of a sales pitch. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the consultant was kind of pushing for this equipment. Okay, and it, and that's why when I saw this this the prices on here seventy six thousand dollars. <laughs> I and I, it only takes care of just the town's end of it. I'm yeah. saying, wow. Eventually, this is going to be pawned off onto the to rate payers. Okay, because if there isn't enough money there now, mm -hmm. the three percent that we charge the the rate payers now isn't enough to cover this. Plus, what Access Oxford is doing, that means we're going to have to ask to up it to 4% or 5%. I don't want to do that. Right. No. I want to do no. it the least expensive way, but yet get the service that we need. Right. That's right. the bottom line. Well, and, and we're paying the consultant, so we give the co consultant, look, this is what we want. We're the consumer, and the town manager tells them, and, right. and that's yeah. it. But, but a consultant is, is I, I know what you're talking about, Jenna, and I agree with you. And a consultant's a great idea, but the consultant isn't going to be on the hook to make sure we still get a clarified, nice production out of all our, out of our two studios, out of the school department and the government. So to me, it's a very important thing that the communication has to be there so that that consultant is giving us or giving them the right information so that when this is done we're satisfied we get that clarity because <laughs> you, you know you, and you can get consultants yes to bring another one in you can get them that are going to be you know it's, it's again like lawyers you know dueling they, experts you, i don't want that you can you can <laughs> right yeah <laughs> personally right. i i agree with with uh selectman's or or your requests about let, let's hold it off. I, I'm all for that. Let's hold it off. But let's hold it off to the next meeting right. to get, okay, this is what we want. And then I want to give them the authority. That's my opinion as a member of this board to give them the first go at it that, okay, here you go. Get it done. Get it fixed. End of story. And if it's not in six months or, or 90 days or whatever, whatever the time frame is, I don't care. Well, then, I, I, and, you know. and, and this is going to be my last comment. This, this consultant... I don't know. Is this a consultant or is this a guy who's like selling equipment? No, he's, no, a, consultant. he's a consultant. He is a consultant yeah. because I know that you know a guy who's selling equipment's gonna his equipment's the best. He's That's gonna spec right. all across the line. So Been there, this is guy is a true blue consultant. He's yeah. not selling anything. He's not a sales guy. He's We're not a buying designer. anything. Right. All right. I just want to be clear on that. So. so there's a motion on the floor. I already so I already send my motion. Okay. Oh wait, I, and and I guess. To, to the point, okay, this guy's not a consultant. I mean, he's not a sales guy. Then I don't want to buy anything off this guy. No, he doesn't sell anything. He doesn't sell I, anything. I, that, because I, don't, I, I want an unbiased opinion. And if he's selling something, yeah. no. he's not selling anything. We, we want him to be a consultant. All right. And we're giving him the, the direction, just so let's make this clear. The direction that the board wants to go is to let Access Oxford handle the whole ball of wax. The town broadcasting, the school broadcasting, and the public broadcasting, okay? And our consultant will work for you. With us. With us. Mm -hmm. With them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But, uh, I, I think the bottom line is, Joe, I, and I think you, I you need want your direction. Yes, and you're getting you know, it tonight. You need to okay. tell me you, what you want. How are you going to evaluate me? You're getting it. All right, I accept that, and okay. I appreciate it. Thank the you. The thing is, I know what you're trying to do, and I know you've got the town's best interests at heart. Okay, but you didn't have the direction, obviously, because the last meeting we talked about having that line dropped from the, the school department, second floor, down to the first floor to access Oxford, and that Correct. didn't happen. When I went there today, I didn't see that done, and that, we all nodded our heads, you, you too, that this is going to be done, and access Oxford was going to be broadcasting from their studio, the school department stuff. And... and okay. And I, I defined the problem, the problem, as school committee meetings were being rebroadcast on Channel 11. 
I think uh, Selectman right. LaMarche best articulated it. I fixed that problem. School committee meetings can now be rebroadcast on Channel 13. That isn't that doesn't move the wire down so that everything is in then we're going to have to move channel 12 over there too everything is in access oxford studios right see joe you shouldn't be fixing that problem that's their job it should be a simple i i said it that night you're right and it should be a simple thing okay that's a problem correct it get it so school committees on their channel simple as that do what you got to do you shouldn't be fixing that they should be that's what they get paid for so and that's that's what this whole thing is about give them the authority do it you know we have a problem we shouldn't be evaluating Joe and saying gee you know I mean that shouldn't have it happened that's that's done and over with but from now on we got a problem fix it get mm -hmm. it fixed Mr. Chairman if yes. I may just on the same note if, if there isn't any progress made based on our discussion and the direction that I think we're giving and we're back here in two months or three months, and it's that guy's a salesman, and he didn't help us. Guess what? I'm gonna, I'm still gonna be prepared to make a vote to put all the money somewhere. So either people figure it out and get it done, or the money. I mean, I'm just speaking for myself, Mr. Chairman, because right. if we're back here and I don't want to be he back here. he wouldn't agree, and we couldn't figure it out, and the consultant was dictating to us, and he was trying to sell equipment. If it's not done for whatever reason, I'm gonna be prepared to take a vote to give it all to somebody. So, and I, you know. But we, we We've got to set some time frames here, though. I mean, you're asking for specifications. Yes. We're asking our consultant to work with Access Oxford to give us the specs of what we need to do the job. Is that understand understandable by everybody involved? I mean, it's okay. And by when? We should have a date, exactly. 30 days? Is that enough time, Joe? to do what to get the consultant oh we'll have them uh, with them and that, do that that. Me that meeting should consist of you access oxford and, and the some consultant. of you and whoever yeah. member of the board wants mm -hmm. to be present and i would request that that be in the evening yeah we could that Fine. we can do that and that okay. should be done within th 30 has days to be done soon yeah within All 30 right. days yeah. well what's soon well, wait yeah, a minute. Are you, gonna, you meet in you know. two weeks. Yeah. Okay. I, this isn't something we can Meeting have done. this week? Yes. December 4th and December 18th. Because of the holidays. How about prior oh, to our week? December 18th meeting? Wait a minute. Yeah. Next week? Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah, that because Christmas, that's going to be a non-week anyway, Christmas. Right. What if we said the 18th by, by right. prior to the 18th, in, in 18th. preparation for the 18th meeting? All right. So this is rescheduled to the 18th. Right. All right. Yeah. The meeting that you're going to have. No. Right. We, we, when you're all going to vote. Meet. We're going to meet. Yes. The AC, but right. Gonna meet but that's when you're going to make the decision. No, 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 no. And I'll meet ahead of yeah, time. Yeah, but you, you need to have a meeting with the consultant before, before the 18th. 18th. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Right. right. So he understands what, and and we also then. Right. So we can all get on the same page. Okay. Right. And that should be done so prior you, to the 18th. You and I have and to the communicate. The 18th, we make our yes. decision. Correct. Okay. Sounds good. Yes. I think we're all on the same page now. As Hopefully. long as we know, I want to know when this meeting is. I want yeah. to be there. Yeah. You'll yeah. be there. I don't know why. I must be a masochist. Because you're, <laughs> <after this. laughs> you're learning. It's a learning opportunity. See, we're fulfilling our obligation as the community access channel no, to educate the you. community. And you're part of the community. I, I hate to tell you. you. We all want to do the right <laughs> thing. We just have to work together to get it done. We want to make it work. Yep. That's yep. right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Can we end this issue? Yes. Yes. Mr. Chairman, it was your selectman's request. You're right. <laughs> yeah, right. Put that hammer down, will you? That a mistake. Oh, God. We're moving right along. I thought we were going to be out of here by 7.30. You thought I had some zingers, huh? <laughs> That's the only thing I had on my agenda. Make a motion. <laughs> Thank Make you. a motion to motion adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. The moving seconded. You Call got the it. vote. Yes. 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 Yes, we are adjourned. Right here. Okay, put on your mask and I'll sit on my broom. Go ahead, ring it. I did. Someone's coming. Trick or tree, trick or tree. Well, well, if it isn't two little goblins on my doorstep. How, Mr. Wilcox? What's this trick or treat business? Well, you gotta treat us to something or we'll play a trick on you. Yeah. You know, I sort of suspected this might happen tonight, so I've got a treat all ready for you. Come on inside. Here it is, kids. Right on the table. Oh, boy, I'm yellow. With cream. <laughs> A little piece of the fruit inside. Ah, that's...
that's a Jell-O Halloween special. <laughs> Snooks, that looks like a dish of sunshine.